Start with some developing news right now. The remains of an infant believed to be those of missing eight month old Maya Rudd were found today in Reynolds Station, Kentucky. Kentucky State Police have been searching for her now for a week. That search started when family members told police they had not seen the eight month old since April. So far, both her parents and both sets of grandparents have all been arrested, along with two other men connected to the home where she lived. And that home is where a body was found decomposing. Troopers say the remains were hidden inside that house. Maya's parents are facing child abuse and abandonment charges. The latest arrest is 28 year old Brody Payne. He's charged for his alleged role in a drug operation at the Rudd home where he also lived. What did you see and hear that was so egregious that you felt the need to put the chief on administrative leave? Well, I, I first, the chief brought this to my attention that an incident had occurred. Uh, now it's probably been about two weeks ago. And the second I heard that, I had concerns. I take these. It's the question that we have been asking since the moment Louisville Mayor Craig Greenberg put his police chief on paid administrative leave. He cited concerns over Jackie Gwynn via Rowell's handling of a workplace sexual harassment claim. And today, as you heard, the mayor revealed it was the chief herself who told him about the allegation. He told WHAS 11 News he was notified about two weeks ago. Senior reporter Isaiah Kim Martinez and photojournalist Jessica Farley have been following this story. I know you caught up with the mayor at a public uh, public appearance today, but I also know you have an art for asking questions. What else did you ask him? <laughs> well, there's so many questions, Eric, like you mentioned, that we still don't have clear answers to. One of those questions is an obvious one. What did Mayor Greenberg learn after that May 22nd police command staff meeting that was so damning that he felt compelled to pull LMPD's chief from her position, at least for the time being. Greenberg told me he's not going to talk about the details of his conversation with the chief or what's happened. Instead, he wants to let those two active and independent investigations speak for themselves when they're done. Meanwhile, at Gospel Missionary Church this morning, Deputy Chief Steve Healy spoke at a weekly community discussion he's been attending for years. It's called the Bishop's Table, and Healy addressed the elephant in the room. What's going on with the chief? She's still the chief. Uh, oh, okay. Right. Uh, okay. She's still the chief. Uh, okay. She's just on leave right now, but she's still the chief. Uh, okay. But what I want to tell you, and when you talk about going from the top to the bottom, it really shouldn't matter who's in that chair because our mission is still to serve this community. Yeah. These officers are still supposed to serve this community yeah. in a fair, ethical, and constitutional manner. Yeah. That is what our job is, right. yeah. and to keep this community safe. And this, of course, comes as that audio from the command staff meeting on May 22nd has circulated. It reveals the moments when Chief Jackie Gwynn Villa Roel asks Major Shannon Lauder, who you just saw there a second ago, along with other officers, if there's anyone they couldn't work with. That's when Lauder made the sexual harassment claim. Now, coming up, we're going to talk about how long these independent investigations could take. And we asked the mayor directly, does he see Gwyn Billa Roel returning to the job after the probe is complete? His answer, that's right here at 6. Eric. All right, we'll look forward to that. Thank you. Now, there are several opinions that matter here. So we spoke to Metro Council members about the chief being placed on administrative leave, and several had a similar response. It was a surprise to me. Um, a little bit of a disappointment uh, that an accusation leads directly to a dismissal. It's a disappointment that we have to have a hiccup in the services of LMPD and their leadership. Three investigations into the alleged harassment, one by the LMPD, one by attorney David Byer, a retired FBI agent who's investigated Metro Corrections and Tark in the past, and one by the accuser's attorney, Jared Smith. Two Southern Indiana parents are facing charges today. They're accused of hurting their five-month-old baby. Tuesday, Indiana State Police arrested 24-year-old Michaela Turner and 28-year-old Skylar Hoffman Jenkins, both of Hanover. This came about a month after their baby was taken to Norton Children's Hospital with what police called suspicious injuries. Police said the child was in their care when they happened. Both parents faced six felony charges, including battery and neglect of a dependent. A massive drug bust in Jefferson Town has four people behind bars. J-Town Police and the LMPD seized 30 pounds of meth and 11 pounds of fentanyl pills this week. Officers arrested four men who they believe are from St. Louis. 
Investigators set up a sting operation orchestrating a purchase with the suspected drug traffickers. According to agents, the amount of fentanyl seized could kill the entire population of Louisville several times over. And that was not the only bust in Jefferson Town. Police also seized seven ounces of cocaine during a traffic stop. You can see they tried to hide it in a metal water bottle. Officers also found more than $100,000 in cash. The driver, Daniel Herta, and passenger Jose Moreno were arrested at the scene. All right, it is hot out there. The humidity could be worse. Luckily, it's not as terrible as we know it can be, Colleen, but those days are coming. <laughs> It has almost come. We have some rain in that forecast right now. Actually, over Jefferson County, one little shower just popped up over downtown. Now it's situated over Fern Creek. It's just producing some rain, and it's probably going to fade out here shortly. But that's really all we're seeing on that radar. The rest of us are mostly dry. A shower over in Frankfurt, but that's that front that's pushing through, which will bring some drier air and some slightly cooler temperatures tomorrow. We are going to be staying in the mid to upper 80s tomorrow afternoon and then we're going to be back to that warm mid 90s by Sunday. Right now we're at 91 at the All International, 85 at Bowman, 89 over in Fort Knox and over the next few hours you might come across that stray shower. It feels hot. It feels humid, but behind that front I promise we have some drier air and this is that humidity forecast. The front is pushing through right now. That green is humidity and the yellow is dry air. After that front pushes through we have some low dew points. Beautiful weather for Saturday and Sunday. It's going to feel a little bit more humid as we head towards Monday, especially high pressure is building across the majority of the Midwest and the South. We have some high heat index values in that forecast, not for this weekend. That's going to be for Monday. So we have the Pride Festival and Parade, Racing Loose Soccer. We got Risky Row Car Show, temperatures in the mid to upper 80s on Saturday, high of 95, very hot on Sunday. I'm going to show you that heat index forecast for next week coming up. Eric. That is Pride Festival performer Chapel Row. The big celebration is tomorrow with the parade kicking things off in Nulu. Then the festival begins at Waterfront's Big Four Lawn. Chapel takes the stage at 740, then headliner Icona Pop performs at 9 o'clock. It's going to be a big crowd this year. The tickets are sold out with 25,000 people expected. We have 123 uh, organizations that have signed up for the parade. We're expecting around uh, 12,000 participants to be actively in the parade this year. Um, it is our biggest parade ever. I know things keep getting bigger and bigger, and so we're <laughs> super excited about that. So again, the festival tickets are sold out, but you can still enjoy the parade. That starts at noon on East Market Street and will end at the Big Four Lawn. Now, many groups are ready to share their message of love and acceptance for the LGBTQ plus community. An organization from the University of Louisville is hoping to raise awareness on mental health. Jose Alonzo and Emma Gefter spoke with the mother of an activist about the group keeping her son's name alive. As groups prepare to march in downtown Louisville to celebrate Pride, the LGBT Center at UofL will walk in remembrance of those no longer with us. They're all LGBTQ young people who've died, in, uh, two died in the past month, um, and the other two died in the past few years. Director of the center, Lisa Gunterman, says they plan to raise awareness on mental health within the LGBTQ plus community. This climate of hatred and bigotry is killing our youth. So again, you know, regardless of how people feel about another person, each one of us can do something to build a better world and make sure they know that the world is better with them in it. One life named on Lisa's wrist is trans right activist Henry Berg Brousseau. We asked his mother, Senator Karen Berg, her thoughts on the organization's efforts to honor him. That the fight continues. The work continues. The work of making this world a better place. You know, that's, that's my whole job. That was Henry's whole job. Just to leave this world a little better than you found it. And that strength, that power, that will, is not forgotten. 
talking about her son's advocacy still touches the senator's heart and fills her eyes with tears. Friday afternoons, they would literally go and they would cook and then they would go serve the homeless encampments around where he lived. And people said not only did he feed them, but he knew them. My child really cared about how other people felt. Henry brought awareness to the community through his work with the Human Rights Campaign, even earning recognition from President Biden. But tragically, he took his life in 2022. The last thing Henry did was send a press release warning that trans rights were under attack. But you, my friends, are champions for humanity. Since then, Senator Berg has fought legislation like 2023 Senate Bill 150, which restricts medical care for trans youth. It was vetoed by Governor Bashir, but overturned by lawmakers. Do not give up hope. Do not hurt yourself and God forbid you not go out and hurt somebody else over this. Fighting? I don't know. Fighting or praying. I mean, right now, Unless we were to reverse SB 150, our only recourse is to wait for the courts. For the first time in my professional career, I've known too many young people who've died by suicide. The group's call to action is to increase mental health among the community as they remember Henry and others in Saturday's Pride Parade. In Louisville, Jose Alonso, WHAS 11, on your side. Senator Berg says since her son came out as a teenager, he would always look out for others before thinking about himself. Now, if you are struggling with mental health and have thoughts of suicide, call the National Suicide and Crisis Hotline. That number is 988.